Welcome back to my channel. If you are new to my channel, I'll be happy to welcome you on board as a new subscriber to continue journey with me in this masterclass series. In this episode, we will continue where we left in the previous episode and we will work on the project structure and use of the dependency injection in order to continue developing the required functionality. All right, so let's deep dive into the source code. So here we can see in the serverless YAML file, we have only one function and one endpoint, which is going to be a sign up, right? So, and yeah, we need to change this one as post method because we kept the get just for testing purpose only. So if you revisit this user service, uh, the endpoints, uh, here you can see the sign up, login, verify, uh, profile, card. Um, these are all the endpoints. It has to be there in inside the serverless YAML file. So let's add these endpoints one by one. Okay. So I'm going to copy this one. All right. And just to make sure like it has to be indent accordingly. Uh, this is the, the first indent and second indent is the, the function name. So that is the way we need to keep it accordingly. And you can see the handler also, we are just keeping an indentation and events also accordingly. So make sure all this indentation is uh, it's in, in the correct way. Perfect. Now uh, let's rename this one as login. All right, so you can see these are all the single endpoints, which is uh, having the similar kind of method. Uh, method type is HTTP method type is post. And you can see uh, this is perfect. But for the profile, if you go here in the profile, you can see uh, we have two methods, right? Post and get. So uh, we no need to create a kind of separate function just for uh, profile post, profile get. So we, what we can do, uh, we can keep inside these uh, events also because events is accepting a kind of array. You can see this dash we are using. It's a kind of uh, element of that specific array, something like that. Uh, it's a kind of pattern of the YAML file. So let's uh, add these things, profile. And here we will be having uh, user, let's say. We are not uh, keeping as a profile endpoint. Just the name of the function or handler is perfectly fine. You can keep it at any name. But uh, it, it, the matter is like the path, whatever we are using, it, this is going to be accessible to our client. And our client will be accessed to the whole function, a whole endpoints by uh, using this name only, right? So in our case, we are going to use the user. And first method will be post. So let's copy this one and we'll be, we'll, we'll be using create, create user, right? Create user profile and edit user profile and the get user profile. So these are the, these are the three endpoints we are, will be having for this uh, profile function, right? For, for this one. Now, um, now let's, let's move forward to the next one. What we have. Yeah, we, we forgot to put uh, put here because at any point we need to uh, edit our profile as well as. So now uh, we will be having the cart profile, right? So where uh, maybe post, get, or maybe we can, we need to edit the cart also. We can just uh, keep put as well as, All right? All right, so let's copy this one from here and put it here. So in this case, this is going to be cart. Okay, that's good. So uh, while we are just creating our cart, it will it will get called this one. While we are editing our cart, it will call call this one. And while we are getting our cart, it will call this one. So all the cart operations going to be handled by this cart cart function, just like our sign up date, right? And now uh, what are the else it's left? we can see this uh, payment one, right? Which is called account. So where we will be adding our bank account, uh, if we are buyer or if you are seller, then we will get the payout, right? So uh, this endpoint we need to create. So let's create this one. I'm gonna copy this card one. So now you can see uh, we have all the functions are here, right? The uh, sign up, login, verify, profile card and payment. Okay, so but uh, only sign up function is here inside the handler, right? And you just imagine if we are if we're going to create all the function in one single file, then this is going to be like a little bit clumsy, right? And the whole file will be having all the business logic and all the requests, response, everything. This is real bad. So what AWS said, 
we should have to separate our, our application logic, our business logic, uh, separate from the Lambda function, right? What Lambda function will do, Lambda function only is just to uh, get the specific output from somewhere where the all logic will be going to be executed after that, that logical file or something, it will, it will going to return the specific output to Lambda function only. So, so technically, we are not keeping anything in, inside the Lambda function, only we are just referring uh, what are the input it is coming to uh, by calling this function and we will handing over to that specific things to the service and service will do the all the business logic or application logic and it will give me give us back the, the output whatever we need to throw it to, to the client. That's perfect. So that is what we are going to do right here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a kind of directory structure here inside of the app. So what would be directory structure inside the app? So first of all, create one directory which is called handlers. Perfect. We have now all the required directory inside the app. So let's create a file inside the handlers that is called user uh, user handler. Yes. So why we have created user handler here rather than having here because in Pusar if we have more than one handler then we are we are keeping all the handler files inside the handler directory right and we will be refer all the handler files right here from from this handler so that uh, our serverless yaml file can call all the functions by referring this handler function only so in this case what we are going to do we are just going to uh, cut this one here and just add it right here now all the user handler functions will be here then let's export everything export star from handlers then user handler okay so now if we call anything from uh, serverless yaml file by referring this handler then all the functions exported right here inside this handler file everything will get from this handlers directory perfect um, now create a kind of service file all right so we, we have our user service class and let's create a repository class as well as right that's fine we have our user service which is, which is going to be handle our business logic now an user directory which is going to be handle our our data access layer and we are going to have our models where we will keep our all the model and entities right here and let's create one more directory inside the model which is called dto because we are going to use the data transfer object so in order to uh, use the proper uh, kind of the, the request which is going to be convert to class all right or uh, so we can validate our each and every input properly all right so now we have created our user service and repository and uh, now this is the time where we are we need to just add all this functionality login verify profile card payment and, and everything right so let's add all these functions right here in the user handler so what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this one here. Now if we can see this, all the function login, verify, profile and everything is hooked up properly. So make sure like this, uh, the function name, everything is it's correct way. Okay. So this is, uh, it will be caps. Okay. Verify. Once again. Yeah, that's cool. Everything is correct now. So now we have added our, all the functionalities, but you, you can see still this whole uh, user handler is totally dirty, right? So we are returning all these things from here. And uh, again, we need to add all this business logic. So let's add all these codes in user service. So first of all, what we are going to do, we are going to import user service. That is going to be now user service is created so let's hand over all this functionality here uh, let's return return service dot sign up as an example sign up so here we will pass our event certainly this function doesn't exist inside the user service right so what we are going to do let's go to the user service and inside the user service we're going to create one uh, function that is called the sign up Right, or maybe maybe we can uh, we we can keep a different name as an example. Sign up. What sign up is doing? Sign up is doing. Sign up is creating the user. Right. Let's say create it. Create user. Create user. Come on. 
Okay, in the user service, we're going to add my async create user and create user is taking uh, event event and API one gateway gateway proxy event b2 proxy event b2 all right and we need to return the same uh, same response right just like we did for our, our here let's uh, cut this one from here and let's add it here in and the create user all right and you can see right now uh, in the user in the sign up function when sign up function is going to be called then we'll be we need to uh, just hand over all the function call uh, to the service so service is going to be handle all the accessibility and whatever it is right there and it will give you back the data right or maybe you can just uh, get the data and you can return it you can do vice versa you can do it right all right, so you can see this Panson, this code will be repetitive, right? So what we are going to do, we are we have already created one utility directory. Let's create a file which is called response. Let's create a file which is called response.ts. And inside this response.ts file, we are going to add a couple of code so that so, so, so that we can utilize over and over for everywhere wherever the response is going to be involved. So const a unknown will be better than keep it as a kind of any right so we will check if uh, data is there data is there then we will return something else which is called uh, something like this so this status code will be whatever the status code we are going to uh, pass to this parameter response and header will be like this later on we will add more headers right here and message will be not this one hard coded whatever the message we are passing right here and data will be always the data because we are going to use here uh, uh, ES6 type of syntax it is we are, we are using, right? So that's why we no need to use the data right after the colon. So these are the things it will be perfectly fine. Now, if data it doesn't exist, then we no need to send the data, right? So let's omit the data from here. That's perfectly fine. This, uh, this permit response is done right now. So. Uh, but uh, every time we need to call this one, the parameter response from everywhere uh, by passing all this code. So why we are not adding some kind of the wrapper or maybe some kind of other function as well as in order to promet response for us. Uh, as an example, we can add export const. And another response we are going to add that is called failure. So what we did here, first of all, we try to get the error object from here, right? And after that, we are just to try to get the error message from here. If the error message is exist in this error object, right, by looking the key, and then we will be assigning the error message right here. Otherwise, we will assign a kind of uh, hard-coded error stuff, which is called error card. So maybe in future, we are going to add uh, some more refer class, which is going to handle our error uh, properly. Uh, so, uh, so, so we can keep track of the whole error stuff in the CloudWatch. All right, so let's return this error from here. Return promet response which is we have created on the top of this one and provide the code and we can provide error messages messages and uh, whatever the data we are not providing any data but still we can pass the error messages as well as right here error messages if it is not a kind of array of the error then we can simply return this one Perfect. So now we can utilize these two uh, two function from from our here uh, from our user service, right? So you no need to do anything here. I simply just return this one, just like uh, success response. Perfect. So now our create user is is done, right? So you can see here from the user handler, we can directly call this one, user, user, this one, this create user. And uh, 
let's remove this one okay and the similar thing we are going to do for our all the login and other stuff also here we can say this one is the user login user login and this one is going to be our user verify verify user verify user here in the profile uh, section you know here we are we are having the multiple events right so it depends on like the post post and put and get it can call the three different different functions from the service right so what we are going to do based on this method uh, what type of method we are getting it that uh, based on that only we are going to call uh, the specific functions so uh, let's skip this one and card and payment all so first uh, let's create this, these two functions in the user service here we are going to copy this one and this is going to be uh, user user login a response from the user login user login and this one going to be a verify user verify user response from verify user verify user and now just let's create the rest of all functions whatever we are going to return from here right the card and payment all the functions depends on type of the method that is we are going to create and then we will be adding all the sponsors right here so go to the user service and let's create here let's put this one call and now let's add this one which is going to be our create create profile perfect so now the card section now the card section so here we are going to create our card create card and now let's go to the payment section payment section here this is going to be our create payment method this is not mandatory you need to keep the same name or something but uh, it is it is always suggested to keep a kind of meaningful name so in order to to understand better uh, maybe your colleague will understand whenever you are you are visiting this function yeah this function is creating payment method right something like that so you know, we can keep any name at as per your requirement all right so all the functions we have added right here in the user service so let's utilize all these things right here in in this uh, handler perfect so now we are going to add all the functionality for our profile uh, let's let's get the uh, http method which is we are getting called from our for the profile you can see here in the in the profile we are having the three methods right post and put and get so while we are calling the profile we are we are having all these possibilities for this http apis so let's capture it right here uh, first i'm going to declare a kind of uh, a local variable which is called const uh, http method let's make it camel case event because this is our event parameter it has a kind of uh, uh, options which is called a request context request context yeah and the request context has the, the http and http has a method right so uh, absolutely every time whenever we are getting called this uh, any kind of functions from here with the help of the api gateway proxy and version 2 then we will be having this uh, method for sure right so let's check like if the http http method is is post maybe later stage we will be converting all these things to the enum or maybe utility function so it can it can give you the proper way uh, rather than passing all the stuff we will be passing this one right there then it will give you uh the the correct syntax so that is what we will do in the refactor phase so for a while we'll just uh, go with like this okay so return uh, if it is a kind of post method so what we are doing right here uh we are we're just creating the user right this is profile so here in the user service you can see we have the create profile perfect so now add this one here 
done service dot create profile create profile and we need to pass the event as well as here okay now let's uh, add these things copy these things from here else if if it is a method type is a kind of uh, put put then return service dot get profile get profile event else else if method type is uh, it's a kind of a get oh sorry this is not uh, the, the put this is going to be get and this is going to be put put then return service dot uh, this one is edit profile event so let's try to create in order so post put and get right and post this one will go above and post put and get if it doesn't match the HTTP method then we'll be return so we'll try to try to make sure like all the error code has to be in a small letter we'll try to make uh, follow some kind of convention so that's fine so now our profile is profile is done the similar things we are going to do for our card as well as let's copy this stuff and if uh, it's a kind of post then we are going to create create card and it's kind of put then update card update card and if it's a kind of get then get card right then similar thing we are going to use for our payment as well as uh, here the payment method and update payment method and get payment method get payment method so we have added all the methods for our profile a card and the payment method uh, based on the what type of HTTP method we are just uh, calling this uh, specific function right uh, so we will be grabbing this HTTP method from our request context but we need to make sure this is going to be our lowercase because initially it is providing as a kind of uppercase letter uh, and so just to make it lowercase let's copy this one as well as replace with all the places okay so now let's spin the server run dev awesome our server is uh, spinning correctly right these are our lambda functions and these are our endpoints which is we are exposing accordingly in the serverless yaml file right let's uh, go and give it a try from the uh, postman so here i am going to uh, add a request here if you are going to call this one you can see this is uh, this response is coming from the create user which is calling from here in the in user handler it is passing to this create user function and it is calling from the create user from the success response it is calling this one uh, okay so that's cool uh, next I just to try to call this a profile or card or payment type of method any one of them so at least we can get to know like it is going through properly uh, let's go here and we're going to duplicate this one and if we're going to call you can see response from create user profile this is coming from here right uh, this this one this one this create user profile and uh, now we are going to call the get one so it should have to uh, come the response as an like this uh, now just put it as get yeah get profile then if we're gonna put this one use as a put method then it should have to be yeah edit profile perfect so it is working correctly now um, as you can see in the sign up functions we are uh, this adding this one right this uh, body right email id or password whatever it is so that is we should have to capture right here inside this function um, where are 
yeah we should have to capture this one and create user function right here so let's uh, try to log this one console.log event so at least we can we can determine what uh, what is the body count and it is coming and um, uh, let's try to call it here this one now if you go here we should have to see okay so what I need to do maybe I need to restart the server let's clean it up again try to call this one sign up yeah it is getting called now you can see we have uh, the body information right this is what we have posted from our postman right uh, as a kind of json response json request from here right and you can see this is json body we should have to capture it right here inside of this user service also uh, in order to, to create the user okay and rest of all is fine which is we are going to explore later uh, but first uh, let's take care of this one uh, this this user body okay so where exactly this exists it's inside the event and it has a body which is going to be our user ID password if you can call this one from here we can see our email ID and password is getting it right here right so what we need to do in order to get this email ID and password we need to parse this session session parse then we can get this uh, body now if you call once again then we can get the email is this one and password is this one now you can see here while we are requesting something then we need to parse the our session stuff right here so we are not going to do this one uh, as, a, as a kind of standard practice we're going to use some kind of uh, the plugin to do so uh, so in that case we're going to use MIDI so let's uh, install the MIDI uh, so just copy this one from here and add it here oops add it here and one more thing we are going to use that is called uh, go to the MIDI, MIDI plugin uh, middleware and official middleware here we can see uh, HTTP JSON body parser so that is we are going to use copy this one and here add it here perfect so now uh, here in the user handler we need to wrap up our whole function with MIDI so our user function here we need to wrap up whole function with MIDI so let's uh, wrap up this one so uh, let's add instead of async we are just going to use uh, ID MIDI and this is going to wrap up this way and we are going to use and we need to use the digestion body parser right let's use this one body parser yeah this is a middleware so I need to call like this so already it's a kind of promise okay so you can put a sync also but without putting a sync also it's gonna work and uh, now, now what we're going to do let's uh, go to this uh, create user so now here instead of this JSON parse you know then you can directly get this this body stuff from from here and let's spin it up from here call you can see it's a kind of object right now right it has a kind of uh, uh, email ID and the password this is no, no more string okay so this is the way we can directly get this stuff uh, from, with the help of the MIDI okay all right so now we are going to add dependency injection so at least we can uh, utilize the our data access layer also so let's add a property to this class so now our handler is giving error right so that is we need to fix it we need to install a couple of library here so let's add all those right libraries perfect so we have added this in this library import from this ring and we'll be use container container yeah yeah container and we'll be using this container right here which is going to be our mm, the service is called container the result 
result, we will put our 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 service, which is called user service. Yeah, that's fine. But in the user service, we need to add a couple of things. And here in the user service, we need to put add rate auto auto injectable. Right. So what auto injectable will do? Whatever the dependencies exactly it's needed for in order to create this user service, it will inject from from there. Right. Uh, so uh, here here it will it will resolve while user service will get going to be created then it will automatically create the repository as well as and inject it to the user service, right? So now if we go to call here, let's say uh, as an example, just to put uh, some kind of things right here in user repository, let's say sync, uh, then uh, as an example, well, we are just, uh, well, just calling this one, then maybe we can directly call uh, this repository dot create user operation so it's a kind of a sync function let's put a wait oh wait this one okay all right so now now we have added our injectable file and we have added this one also so let's go to the handler function so make sure we are we are we are importing our reflag metadata here which is called a reflag metadata now we are all set perfect now we are all set everything is added Let's try to spin the server and we will test it out if it is work perfectly. Um, yeah, our server is spinning perfectly. Let's clean this out and try to call this one from here. Sign up. Now you can see we are getting the response from the create user. And if you can see, then we can getting we are getting this one as well as and our user created in DB that is also getting created from our user repository. Right whole flow is added right here all the functionalities are are hooked up properly from the infrastructure side so a couple of more tweaking we, we, we need to do it but stage by stage we will do it accordingly now uh, now in the next episode we are going to work on our business logic right where we will be adding all this logic stuff in in the user service and we'll be introducing the data access layer also we are where we will be working on the postgresql in in terms of deploy I will show you quickly how we can deploy the whole thing on AWS as well as uh, here in the provider section make sure we are adding a couple of more parameters that is called version functions because version function in terms of while we are trying to deploy the whole uh, application it's an every lambda function will be keeping their their previous version as well as right it will be it will stay always the latest version but uh, it will stay it will keep the previous version as well as if you if you are not keeping it uh, as a pulse because by default it is keeping it true okay and now we need to define as a kind of staging because uh, which stage we are trying to deploy because if we are not mentioning any kind of uh, stage right there it will be deployed as a default so we don't want that we should have to have a kind of maybe a staging environment we have the, the production environment we have the QA environment all right so that's why we stage is necessary let's put stage stage we are just keeping as dev and uh, which region we are going to deploy this one that is also necessary region and in our case we are going to use uh, yeah uh, EU central EU central one and HTTP API we are we are using we are calling these things from the local machine as well as so let's try to for put course course equal to true right now now this is enough for the deployment purpose uh, later stage we are going to explore more about the api gateways and the resources which is we are going to uh, access from the lambda functions because if we are not adding kind of uh, any kind of access uh, accessibility stuff or maybe im rule it is not uh, we, we cannot access the rest of all resources from the aws infrastructure so that is we are going to explore uh, step by step so first let's uh, try to deploy these things but before deployment what we need to do we need to uh, set up our aws cli which is we have already installed right so let's go to the aws portal all right so i have already uh, i have already here in my portal so let's go to this um, im rule this is im rule and here uh, i have already one user okay so let's create another one, which is I'm going to create as um, SLS or maybe uh, not. So 
still as master class. Master class. Okay, and I need only access key of the programmatic access just to check it out. This one, let's just try to tick here and click on the next permission and we're going to attach some existing policy. So in this case, uh, while we are deploying the stuff, you know, we need administrator access. And uh, later stage, we are going to uh, explore more about the IAM role so we can have a certain specific uh, access uh, uh, to just to, to deploy the stuff while we are deploying from the CI CD or maybe GitHub somewhere else. Uh, but the pro well, I don't want to dig deeper. So I don't want to give you a more complex uh, way uh, just to the kickstart of this application. So let's uh, try to take this administrator access for a while. And uh, right now, there's no key I'm going to add next review because this is my temporary uh, key. Uh, after this tutorial, maybe I'll, I'll revoke this one and uh, create the user. OK, cool. So and this is my console login stuff uh, just so we can use the pro to login. And right now, you can just copy this access key. And let's go here and LWS. let's configure. And this is existing one. So I'm going to paste this one, the latest one. Now, now let's uh, click on the show secret. Once this is you, you click on the show. And if you click on the hide, and this is not, never going to show you once again. So make sure you are downloading the CSV file as well as for separate site. So just copy this one and add this one here. Um, and uh, my default region is U central. This is nearest nearest to me, and I'm gonna keep it as default. And default output is uh, my one is Zeshan. By default, maybe it will be YAML or something else. But if it is not there as a Zeshan, just to make sure you are always putting Zeshan. So, while you will be having any kind of trouble or something you are deploying, then the meaningful messages it will be always uh, displaying as a Zeshan format, and it's quite readable. So just put a Zeshan. Okay, now now it's good to go. All right, so let's deploy this uh, whole application on AWS. Right before deployment, let's add a script right here in, in, in the script section. So uh, I'm going to add as a kind of VPLOY deploy and it will be SLS deploy. That's this purpose. OK, while we are running this deploy script, then SLS serverless deploy will be going to execute on the serverless CLI. And that's this purpose means we are getting the logs, whatever the deployment operation is happening right behind the scene, we are getting the logs from there. All right. So let's uh, try to execute this one. Yarn run deploy. It'll going to take some time. I'm going to press forward the whole thing and I'll be back once this is done. Perfect. So now our application is deployed successfully. Now you can see these are our endpoints and these are our Lambda functions. Let's give it a try from our Postman. If we go here on the sign up, let's copy this sign up URL. This one, copy. And here, just paste it here. And just to try to call this one. You can see we are getting the same response, right? As, as, we, as we received it from our local machine. Uh, for the user profile also, here, this is the post one, which is called slash user. So we're going to use the same URL here in the user profile. Paste, this is user. And we're going to call post one. Then we can see it is it is getting the, the create user profile. And uh, secondly, if we're going to call this one as a put, then it is edit user profile. If we call as get, we are getting the user profile as well. Perfect. So it is working correctly uh, right after the deployment as well. So this is all for this tutorial. Just to recap of this tutorial, we have added all the required endpoints here in the serverless YAML file. And after that, we have structured our project and we have added our dependency injection also here for our user service. And we have used the MIDI as a kind of middleware for our Lambda where we are parsing our body. So here inside the user service, if you go to the create user, you no need to parse anything for your body. 
and it will give you a structured JSON data right after that. In the upcoming tutorial, we are going to implement the data access layer where we will implement PostgreSQL and we will be validating our input accordingly and some of the more advanced stuff we will be implementing in that episode. I hope you like this video tutorial. If you haven't subscribed my channel, subscribe it right now because this masterclass series will give you a lot of information regarding to improve your career and landing a better job opportunity. Thank you. See you in the next episode.